y'all it's Kimberly with a chance to sparkle and in this video we're gonna be doing a little sort of uh, drill and chill drill and chat kind of thing um, I'll tell you a little bit about myself but I'm not going to deep dive um, probably a little more about what I have plans I have and things like that um, but I had planned on starting this video with a little unboxing unbagging but unfortunately the post office did a number on my package from drill pin frenzy and my dragon cover minders came in pieces thanks to the usps i've sent a message to donnie to let her know but there are like you know this one lost his head and i have the head but the horn is missing and this one lost his wing which i have but he also lost the tip of his tail which i do not have so there's whole parts of my dragons that are missing and I imagine fell through the hole and I mean USPS really did a number on this little package but the rest of it survived so I am going to show you what came in the package. Um, I ordered from her, uh, let's just slide it back out this way, a couple of decals. I have plans for them a couple of different places that I could put them, uh, one being on my desk, uh, one being on a homemade portfolio, which I'm going to have a video coming up of it, or on my computer, or my computer uh, case, or on one of the cases that I carry stuff with me to and from the hospital with, but um, I got a blue one and a purple one. Um, purple is one of my favorite colors. Teal is my other favorite color. Uh, she tried to do me one in teal, but it just wouldn't work, uh, but I told her if it didn't to give me one in blue. So I've got a blue and a purple. And then I also got a couple of drill pins. I got one of her Rainbow Love drill pins in a teal color. And then I got the Cuckoo Maloo uh, magnifying glass um, drill pin that has the cute little character on it. Uh, which she said thought, she thought looked like a little uh, koala or something. I think it kind of looks like a little hippo what it kind of looks like to me but I'm not real sure and then this up here looks like a little rat down here actually I think that now I think of that is a little rat I need to look it up because I'm not up on like all the kawaii characters and different Japanese and Chinese and uh, different characters but it kind of looks like a little mouse to me so that's what I think Kukumalu Kukum probably is is a little mouse but it's cute and you can put little uh, sparklies inside there, which is probably something that I'm going to do. But uh, I just like having all kinds of different pins. And I've got a little pins everywhere and toolboxes that I carry with me to various places and all kinds of stuff. But I love my pins. And um, but anyway, let's get to diamond painting since that was kind of anticlimactic. And there's like pieces from the package that are going everywhere and this wax stuff does not this wax like well it's not wax paper but it's got a waxy cover on it and it collects hair and dust and everything and there's stuff that fell out of that package that just went all over it probably the bits and pieces of my dragons that I can't find anyway I'm gonna pull off this section which I did already do a little bit of this section last night when I was just uh, diamond painting late at night this is my little bucket. Um, I got this in the dollhouse section of Hobby Lobby, and I'm going to put a, well, I have one magnet on it, but I'm going to put a second magnet on it and turn it into like a little color reminder. Uh, but it's magnetic, so the one magnet sticks on it. But uh, it's like a little trash bucket. But this came out of the doll section, and it's just a cute little bucket. And that's my little trash bucket when I'm uh, doing my diamond painting, and I'm going to paint with this pen. Uh, which I got from uh, Jim's Handmade Pins. I think that's the name of it on Etsy. I've linked it before in a previous video. Uh, but this was like a teal and purple and blue pen that he did for me. And in one side I've got, I believe that is cinnamon patty wax on my four place here. And on this side I have the super sticky patty wax, which I am insanely in love with. Anyway, let's see what color can I do. I was doing the three tens last night when I stopped and I hadn't finished them. So let's just continue doing three tens. 
Wrap my big tray. Anyway, some of the plans that I have uh, for my channel coming up is one of those is the um, handmade portfolio that I'm going to do. I've already made a couple of portfolios. Um, I made a big, huge portfolio that I uh, keep a lot of my diamond paintings in, and then I've got a couple of small portfolios that I keep um, smaller paintings in, but I want one that I am going to uh, carry with me to the hospital and on trips um, anytime I want to travel with my diamond paintings. Um, and I'll go ahead and show you some of the things that uh, you might need if you want to go ahead and get this stuff and follow along with me. Um, from Walmart, you can get a foam board, which I can reach this one and just kind of hold it up a little bit, but there's an Elmer's foam board. As you can see, it's solid white, but it's a 20 by 30 uh, piece of foam board over in the school section um, at my Walmart. I don't know if you can see the side, how thick it is. Um, this one is a buck seventy-seven, I believe, at my Walmart. They do have one that's for under a dollar, but it's not quite as thick and sturdy. Um, and that one you can easily mess up because I messed up one corner on it, but that doesn't really matter because I am going to cover it in duct tape. And these are the colors that I'm thinking about using on it: this galaxy, and then this purple as like an accent color, but mostly put it in this galaxy color. Um, the handles are going to be made out of, excuse me, are going to be made out of uh, paracord, and I am making, this is my second handle, I've made this much of it, there's a couple more like braids to do on it, which I'm going to show in the video, uh, but I'm going to have a link to a video of someone who actually teaches on YouTube how to do the paracord, and this is a fishtail braid. Uh, for the paracord and it's going to be a link to his video on how to do it. I just did one alteration and did not do the knot at the bottom because I'm going to need these ends open because I'm going to put it through the cardboard and then use the ends which I'll show you how I do all of that in the video but the cords are going to be made out of braided paracord and I just got all black. You can get colors if you want to. My Walmart only had black, red, white, or rainbow, and the rainbow did not go in my galaxy because it's more of a neon rainbow. Or else I probably would have got that. If they'd had like purple or teal or something like that, I probably would have got it. Um, you will need a pair of pliers, which you will use in the fusing process, but that's the only time that you'll really use them, but you don't want to use your fingers because you're going to melt the paracord in the fusing process, and you'll want to use the pliers and not your fingers for the fusing. And speaking of that, you will need a lighter. Um, you will need a ruler. You will need an exacto knife. You'll need a pair of scissors. You will need a box cutter because that foam cord does not cut with an exacto knife. Um, the exacto knife is for your tape. Um, the uh, box cutter is for your foam board. The scissors are for your paracord. And then the ruler, of course, is for like measuring straight lines. And then you'll also need a measuring tape, which I don't have my measuring tape handy, I don't believe. Oh, yeah, I do. There we go. You'll need a measuring tape so that you can measure the 30-inch uh, length you're going to cut in half on the board. Um, and so it's going to end up being like a 15 by 20 uh, when it's all said and done. Uh, but... Yeah, that's about it. And then, you'll, of course, you'll need the duct tape. Um, I think that's everything. I'm not positive, but I think that's everything. I think I had a picture to reference it. But, um, yeah, I think that's everything. I won't go hunting down the picture. But I think that's everything that you end up needing. Um, huh, there's my lighter. Speaking of which, there's my lighter. <laughs> To melt the paracord is about to fall off. My bed is beside me. It's about to fall off my bed. Anyway, let's get to diamond painting and we'll go further. Um, as you can see, I've got my cinnamon patty wax in right here. I keep it right here on the edge, usually on the paper. Sometimes I'll put it on top of the diamonds. If you put it on your painting, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little bit of pink discoloration right there. It will actually melt a little bit on the sides of your painting. Uh, so, if possible, put it on top of your paper 
uh, but if you put it over your the black strip on your uh, light pad, it will actually warm it up enough to where you can load your pen really, really easily, which that's uh, one thing I want to talk about, a little trick that I have learned at the end of a diamond painting session. Since uh, you do want this good and warm in some of our houses, ooh, I got fuzz all over that. Don't know how that happened. Probably one of the cats walking across my desk. But since you want this kind of warmed up to make it easier to uh, load and some of our uh, rooms stay kind of cool, especially in the winter, if you uh, will load up your pen at the end of a diamond painting session so that it's already loaded and ready at the beginning of your next diamond painting session, you won't have to worry about that. Um, I did go ahead and load my super sticky last night, but I had done almost this entire, uh, let's see, I had done like this section here the first night and did not load it, and then I had done a majority, like almost two-thirds of this section before I ever loaded my pen. Now, there is some uh, multi-placing that I did in here. But for the most part, I stuck to the single placer. Uh, the, this looks like it would be multi-placed, but this is a mix of blue and black. Most of the multi-placing was done like in this blue section here or here. Um, there was a little bit of multi-placing done like right here, but for the most part, it's not worth doing the multi-placing when there's like so much changing of it. You, you can do like one four and then you got several singles that you have to fill in. So Unless it's a big multi-placing section, I typically don't use my multi-placer. I typically will just use my single placer. But uh, anyway, I use this for, like I said, all of this first section because I do about about a three or four inch section at a time. And uh, this was about split in half. And I did the first section and two thirds of this section uh, in the first go of loading this for the very first time. Now it does look like I've used it a lot more than that, but I got brave and decided to try it in my multi-placer and just to see what happened. And it will work in the multi-placer, but you do have a lot more issues with it sticking a little too hard in the multi-placer. Uh, you will end up losing pins down, uh, drills all down in the multi-placer uh, using that. So I don't recommend doing it, just like Robin said, don't recommend doing it in the multi-placer. And I'm sorry, but I am blind. You might end up seeing extra light and a little glare, but I have a magnifier, which I may end up, if it looks like there's too much of a glare, cut off the light on. But I am losing my eyesight, and it's just much easier for me to drill paint with my magnifying glass. And so I do use it. Um, it's off camera so that you can't really see it because I'm afraid if it was on camera, see it would cause too much issues. So I've got it far enough back where you won't be able to see it and it won't cause you any issues, but I do use it. So it may look a little odd with me diamond painting to start off with until I get used to having it this far back. I've got a couple of drills that want to stay crooked right there. And yes, I use my fingernails as straighteners, but I have some pretty stout fingernails because I do my own fingernails at home. And if I mess them up, I can fix them no problem for free. Not have to go uptown and get somebody else to do them. I don't do acrylic. I do my nails with what is called poly gel, which is very easy for you to learn to do at home. There's plenty of videos on the internet that teach you how to do it. And that's where I learned was on YouTube how to poly gel. And I actually love doing my nails at home because it's cheaper. And I can do them however I want them to be and change them as often as I want. And um, I can't use uh, things like Color Street. I have extremely narrow fingernails. And none of the uh, things like Color Street and stuff have uh, nails that will actually fit my pinky. Uh, most pinkies are about the same size as my ring finger. 
uh, or pretty close to the same size as my ring finger. My pinky is an extremely narrow nail. It doesn't look like it on camera, but I do have very narrow nails. In fact, my thumb is about the size of most people's middle finger. Um, I've actually had nail artists comment on how narrow my fingers are. It's hard for them to do uh, nail art on my fingernails because they are so uh, narrow. You can't put a lot of nail art on my fingernails. At one time, I wanted to be a nail art channel, but it was just too hard to do nail art on my own fingers because I have to do such tiny, tiny detail. And I don't know if y'all can tell it, but my hands shake. Yeah, you can tell it right there when I'm holding my hand out straight. My hands shake. They've shook all my life. I have what's called essential tremors. And so doing fine detail is not an easy thing for me to do. It's hard for me to cross-stitch because of it. But I like, I like to cross-stitch, but I have a very hard time cross-stitching because of how bad I shake. Um, when I'm trying to put the needle through that little small hole, I have a very hard time at it because it's just not easy. Uh, but you never know. You might see me cross-stitching sometime on this channel. Um, if I find something that I really, really like and I want to show off, I may do a little cross-stitching or at least show it off. I may not show myself doing it because it is painful to watch me cross-stitch. Because I'm, I'm serious. I I will sit there and stab <laughs> over and over and over again trying to reach that one specific hole. Um, I used to knit. I used to crochet, um, but I have uh, health problems that kind of limit my ability to do certain things, and those have kind of fallen away. Uh, they hurt my hands for the most part. I don't know why diamond painting is different and doesn't hurt my hands. Now, if I use a small drill pen, I do have a lot of trouble, but I don't have trouble if I'm using, uh, I can use the small ones. In fact, I buy small ones. You saw that I bought a couple of small ones uh, that I have to, that I just showed you. Um, I just don't use them a lot. I usually use them for travel, and when I don't, you know, when I'm traveling, I don't have to worry. Uh, I'm not usually doing long sessions of diamond painting. Like I do when I'm at home. When I'm at home, I'll sit here for hours on end sometimes and diamond paint. And I think I got a cat who's wanting out of the door. Hold on just a moment. Okay, sorry about that. I had to get up and move my desk and everything and go and let the cat out real quick. Uh, Smokey, my old man, needed to go out. Probably needed to go use the little boy's room. Uh, but... I had to shut my door because uh, the namesake of this channel, Mr. Chance, my young cat, kept coming in and out, in and out, in and out, and busting the door wide open. And there's somebody in the living room, which you probably just heard sneeze. Uh, he was watching TV, and I would hear the dog barking, the dog feet going, him laughing. Uh, everything else when the door would be wide open so I'm trying to keep the door shut so that I can actually drill paint in as much quiet as possible and not only that he's watching TV and we don't want to be demonetized because of uh, music on the television or television programs playing in the background so I also needed to kind of block that out, which he does have headphones that he put on. Uh, so you won't actually hear the TV even if I had the door open, but you will hear him busting out laughing, which you'll probably still hear with the door shut because he is rather loud. And he I'm referring to is my dad. Um, I'll probably go into extreme detail on myself in a more in-depth video that I plan on doing where I tell a lot about myself, but basically I uh, have become disabled through uh, several health issues that have happened, and 
I had to move back home while I was fighting disability. And let's see. Let me get that last section. Let me move this over a little bit. I had to move back home while I was fighting disability. And uh, I am an only child. And rather than move out, uh, my dad told me, you know, one day this house is going to be yours. Instead of wasting your money on rent or a house payment and then ending up with two homes that you have to deal with, why not just stay here because I, I am divorced. I don't have any small children or anything. And so why not just stay here, help us pay bills because they're on fixed incomes. They're you know, both retired. My mother had to retire early because she had to take care of my her baby sister uh, before it was time for her to retire. Uh, her baby sister got terminal cancer, and then my grandmother had dementia, and so my mother ended up retiring early. So her income is not as high as they had expected it to be. And uh, so, you know, with them women on a fixed income, and now I'm disabled and uh, drawing disability, and I'm on a fixed income, uh, it just makes sense. I stay here, I help them pay bills, my rent ends up being a lot cheaper, and they have fewer bills to pay. So it kind of works out in the end. So I, that's the reason that I am limited on space, because everything that I do has to happen here in my bedroom. Uh, my mother, however, has her own bathroom. Uh, the spare bedroom across the hall from me is a uh, genealogy room, uh, craft room, which I fuss about because she doesn't even do the craft that is set up for uh, She used to make cards, and she no longer even does that anymore. And I told her, I said, you really ought to you know, give me part of that room because you no longer use it for those crafts. And, uh, but then she's also got the sun room as well, which is filled up with all of her cross stitch and, um, crochet and knitting and because my mother is into all of that in fact she wants to start a cross stitching channel and she wants me to help her sorry i'm pulling these little downy things out because after they've done their business they smell stout and i don't did not have any unscented ones in. i pull them out and drop them back into their little containers so that the smell will dissipate and go away once they've done their business because I can't handle it. You can hear me sniffling already because I have bad allergies and those things just mess with my senses. I don't know why I am. I need to move this one too because I am so not in line with the one there, which means I need to pull out the black again. Sorry, I'm just not paying attention to what I'm doing. I am several lines off. Let me get those blacks put back. Those three pins filled in right there. Just pull out one of my small trays. Sorry, I'm making a lot of noise. Anyway, all of my crafting has to be done from my bedroom. So my nail art is done in here. I have a rice cog. Um that used to be my art, Brass Cog. I tried every kind of art you can think of, trying to find something to occupy myself when I stopped working. And it wasn't until I, uh, well, this is something I'll go into more detail later too, until I got cancer. And then through cancer, discovered diamond painting uh, because I turned to YouTube uh, in my depression. And in searching for stuff to do on YouTube, I learned. I discovered nail art and I discovered diamond painting. And um, I never thought about doing a diamond painting channel for some reason. It was nail art that I wanted to do. And then I uh, realized that I just wasn't going to be able to do nail art on myself all the time. And well, here we are doing diamond painting. I just started it much later than I planned on because a year ago is when I decided to. Uh, start working towards doing a YouTube channel, and I just hemmed and hawed and did not do it. And now here I am playing catch up since I am new to YouTube right now, but that's okay. It is what it is, and I'm just happy to have the subscribers that I do have, and the more I get, the happier I'll be. But 
I'll be just as happy if I stay exactly like I am. I'll still continue to do what I love and share what I love. Um, I do have an Instagram page. If you're not following me on Instagram, I sometimes post stuff there. I need to get better at it because I don't post there as much as I should. But uh, my Instagram is Chance to Sparkle. Just drop the A. Um, I am getting setting up a uh, Facebook group as well, and it will be a Chance to Sparkle. Um, I have a Twitter, but my Twitter is not set up for my diamond painting either. Um, it's a personal Twitter account right now. Uh, but my Instagram is a uh, influencers creators page. It in YouTube, I kind of well, I started the Instagram first and was showing some of my nail art, and then I started showing diamond painting, and now I show almost all diamond painting and no nail art. I've tried a bunch of nail art that I haven't ever posted because it just on my nails it just doesn't look as good as it does on someone with a whole lot more nail estate as we call it. I just don't have the nail estate to do really nice dim uh, diamond, really nice nail art. So here we are doing this and I love it. I'm sharing something that I love with other people. I'm talking to anyone and everyone who will listen. Um, it's a place that you can kind of vent. It's a place that you can just get things off your chest, that you can just sit and I feel like you're talking to friends. And it just, I don't know, it, it kind of helps, especially when you suffer from uh, things like depression, which of course with everything that I've been through, um, I do suffer from depression, I suffer from anxiety, I have PTSD, um, that's something that I can go into more detail about at a later date as well. Um, I'd rather get my channel established before I start giving y'all all the morbid details of my life. Um, I will tell you a little bit about me. Um, I did have cervical cancer. I am uh, come this May, I think it is, the end of May actually, I will be cancer free for four years, so I haven't quite reached my five year milestone yet. Um, I have uh, a chronic pain condition uh, called myalgic encephalitis, or some people know it as chronic fatigue syndrome, which it is not just fatigue, so it's really a horrible name. Fatigue is just one aspect of it. Um, and it's because of that and the severe pain that I have from it that I go to the hospital once a month and I get lidocaine infusions. And they will take my pain level from about an 8 or 9 all over my body to uh, down to about a 2 or 3. Uh, for the first two weeks, and then after about two weeks, the pain starts slowly going up. And by the time I go to have another infusion the next month, I am back to about an eight or nine. So that's my life. And that, so you, I guess you can understand why I have problems with depression and anxiety when I go through that on a regular basis. Try to adjust my, if I'm shaking the table, I'm really sorry, I'm trying to adjust my uh, things that I can see some of these over here. Got tea scattered out a little bit everywhere. You know, I see everybody like Rachel Ray and such doing the uh, checkerboard pattern. I have tried over and over and over again to do checkerboard pattern. And I will start and then I will mess it up and then I'll give it up. <laughs> And go back to just drilling wherever I drill. Now sometimes I'll drill in a line, sometimes I drill scattered, sometimes sometimes I'll drill a little bit in a checker pattern or checkerboard pattern. You never know how or where or 
what I'm going to do when I'm drilling. Uh, let's see, back to me, uh, what else? Um, the PTSD that I have is from uh, several different abusive situations that I have been involved in, which I'll probably give more detail into that later. Um, when I feel like we're like closer friends on here, um, but I have been through uh, sexual abuse and physical abuse. Um, I've also had a near-death experience in a car, which causes me to have severe anxiety on the road. Um, I'll tell you that story uh, if anybody's interested in it. You'll have to let me know. Um, but it's a rather interesting tale. Pretty much saw my life flash before my eyes, but now I have a problem with... Uh, certain types of vehicles on the road and uh, that's another good reason that I moved back home because when I have doctor's appointments at most of my specialists, uh, they're about an hour ride away and I can drive like locally. I can drive to uh, one of my friend's houses which is a little over two hours away but I take all back roads to her home. Uh, getting on major highways, getting on freeways, um, interstates, anything like that scares the daylights out of me and I have panic attacks. And so my mother does a lot of the driving to my doctor's appointments that are uh, not local, which I'm very thankful for. And she also takes me to my monthly hospital visit to the infusion center because I, I cannot drive when I go. Uh, because when I get out of there, I am like a noodle. I am relaxed. I am almost, for me, I am pretty much pain-free. Um, I've been in pain since I was in my 20s, and I am now in my late 40s. And it, it started when I was in my early 20s. So, and I've been diagnosed with everything. Fibromyalgia, chronic pain syndrome. Um, they thought for a while that I had lupus or MS. Um, it's just every time I turn around, it was something different. And then they finally fell on chronic fatigue syndrome, and that one is uh, stuck for the last several years. So hopefully that's going to be the final decision. Uh, but, yeah, that's a little bit about me. I've been through a lot in my, I'm going to say, young years because I don't even though I, my, I have the body of a 90 year old since I have so much pain and I walk kind of crippled and I have to walk with a cane because of uh, the pain and the uh, issues that I have. Uh, some of it is due to side effects from my cancer treatments. Um, if you haven't had cancer before or if you had cancer and you didn't have any side effects uh, congratulations more power to you. Uh, I am so happy for you. I was not one of those lucky people. I was one of the ones that cancer was the gift that kept on giving, or cancer treatments were the gift that kept on giving. I also have lymphedema from the cancer treatments, and because uh, there was complications with uh, my cancer treatments, and I had to have more intense treatments than originally expected, um, my bladder was over radiated and so my bladder does not function properly and I actually have what is called an inner stem device or as I like to call it a bionic bladder um, that device actually is implanted in my back and it uh, causes my bladder to sp basically spasm when I have to go to the bathroom. Otherwise, I do not know when I have to go to the bathroom. I do not get those signals anymore. Uh, the radiation like cut off the signals from my bladder to my brain that alert me that my bladder is full. Um, when they ran the test to try and figure out what was going on with my bladder, uh, <laughs> the girl running uh, kind of got scared and she says, um, does your bladder feel full yet? And I was like, no ma'am. And a few minutes later, she said, are you sure your bladder's not feeling full yet? No, ma'am, it's not. 
Okay, your bladder has to be full by now because I'm afraid that uh, it's going to explode. Uh, uh, no, it doesn't feel full yet. <laughs> and so there was my problem. Uh, as long as I'm sitting or laying, I don't really notice it. But as soon as I stand up, uh, usually my bladder would let go. And that was really embarrassing to be in my mid-40s and that happening to me. But it's, it's a fact of life. Some women have something like that that happens after birth. Uh, for me, it was after uh, cancer treatments. Oops. And I know, kind of TMI, but it is a part of my life. It's part of who I am. And I am being real and honest and telling you all about myself, telling you more than I planned on telling you in this uh, flip and chat. Um, I do have plans for a what I was going to call a whip and whammy. Uh, this is kind of turning into it. I might call it Whip and Whammy Part 1, maybe, since I'm telling more information than I had planned. But, uh, yeah, that's, uh, I have a bionic bladder. I have lymphedema, which means that, which is in my legs. Um, it's the lower half of my body that got affected. Uh, my legs swell, like sitting here uh, for too long at a desk, my legs will swell. They need to be elevated from time to time. Uh, that's one of the reasons I have trouble working now, because I always worked at a desk before, and I have to get up every once in a while and move. I have to uh, elevate my legs every once in a while. Um, I, do, I can't just sit here for long periods of time, and... You probably won't notice it, but uh, there will be times that I will pause the video and I will stand up and stretch a little bit and move my legs a little bit. and Or I might sit back and elevate them for a little bit and then I'll go back to diamond painting and chatting. But it does happen. It will happen, which means it takes me a lot longer to film these videos. Hence the reason it is taking me longer to do the video I planned on doing next, which was the one with the portfolio that I am making. So I'm doing it in like bits and pieces because uh, I can't just sit here and do it all at once because taping up foam board is a kind of tedious long job. Uh, the first time I ever made a small portfolio, it took me like three hours, I think, all total. My big portfolio took me several days to do because I was uh, doing it in stages. But uh, I won't be showing you how I made my big one. Uh, I actually got the idea of it from someone on YouTube, and I can't remember who it is, but if I do remember, I will link it in the description box down below on how to make a large portfolio with uh, a trifold, not foam core, but a trifold uh, poster board, kind of like you would use uh, in school for science fair, and duct tape. That's what I made mine out of because I just didn't want to spend the money that costs on Amazon when I could be spending that money on diamond paintings. Okay, I'm gonna get my fill stuck in my super sticky fatty wax, trying to get it in that little. There we go. Trying to do it without getting it stuck in the super sticky because you get it stuck in the super sticky, it's hard to get off. You gotta wiggle, wiggle, wiggle to get it to release. That's something I like about super sticky. You get that pop. Oh, I got two stuck. There we go. You hear that snap every time you drop a drill down? I love that snap. Sometimes it's louder than others. But I do I like that snap sound. 
Yep. There's just something about that snapping sound. Which I don't think I mentioned why I am working on. This is the a Diamond Art Club, the little gift. Um, I'll try to remember to insert a picture of it right here. Uh, but it's no longer available on Diamond Art Club. It is sold out and it was a um, discontinued item. So you can't get it, unfortunately. But it is the one that I am working on right now. So it's the one that I'm doing the Wicked Chat with. I am one of those that typically only has one diamond painting going at a time because I just don't have the uh, closet space to hang up works in progress or uh, anything. All of my diamond paintings are either in a portfolio as not started or a portfolio, portfolio as finished. I don't have a works in progress po portfolio. Um, if I do have two works in progress is because one of them is in my travel portfolio that I carry to the hospital with me and one of them is on my desk that I actually am working on when I'm at home which will be a bigger painting uh, this isn't that big of a painting but it's bigger than I would carry with me um, what else can I talk about oh I mentioned earlier about my cats having to let them out I have two cats. One of them is the namesake of this channel. His name is Chance. And uh, I'll tell you about uh, how he got his name. And the other one is my old man. His name is Smokey. Um, Smokey is about 12 years old, I think. He is a solid black, long-haired, just mixed breed cat. Uh, looks like he probably had some kind of uh, big breed in him, not Maine Coon size breed, but uh, like kind of like maybe a uh, Russian Blue size breed in him because he is a large cat. Um, he got his name because when I brought him home, I would actually went to PetSmart and was looking at their adoptable animals. Uh, I was looking to get another cat, and uh, someone had already been trying to entice me to adopt uh, some of their kittens uh, that their cats had had, and I'd gone over and looked at them, but I just did not fall in love with any of them. Now, my mom was going to adopt one, too, and she was just, she'd already told them she would adopt one, so she was trying to pick one out, even though she hadn't fallen in love with them, either. And unfortunately, he's no longer with us. His name was Taz. Uh, he had, uh, I think, kidney failure when he was uh, about six years old, I think. He wasn't very old. He might not have even been that old. Uh, but he had kidney failure, and we lost him. He had to be put to sleep. But, uh, she never really fell in love with him. He was basically just a cat in the house. I think he had more to do with me than he did with my mom. But, uh, I knew I wasn't falling in love with one of their cats, and so I went to PetSmart looking, and I saw this little black cat all by his lonesome in a pen, and I went and held him, and he snuggled up to me and put his little head on my shoulder and just went to purring, and he was so soft and sweet and fuzzy, and I just had a feeling he was going to be long-haired, but I wasn't sure. And the lady wasn't sure. She knew that one of his parents was long-haired, but wasn't sure about the other. Uh, but I just fell in love with him, and I adopted him right there on the spot. Uh, he actually came from the Humane Society. Uh, so he wasn't like a breeder cat, which PetSmart does, doesn't do breeder cats. They do uh, from rescues and uh, humane societies and stuff. But uh, I adopted him right then and there, and I brought him home, and I had no clue what I was going to name him. But I set him down. Well, I actually brought him to my parents' house, and I set him down and was going to surprise them and let him 
let them see him first. And he went walking up to their little water bowl and food bowl, and he got him a little bit of water. And then he went to the food bowl and sniffed it, and there wasn't nothing in it. And he looked up at me and gave me this meow that was the scratchiest old man meow I have ever heard in my entire life. And I just looked at him and said, how many years have you been smoking? <laughs> it just, that's what occurred to me. How many years have you been smoking? And that's when I said, oh, okay, never mind. I just came up with your name. Because his fur actually is like a little bit of brown and black. Yeah, you don't really see the brown until you see it in the sunlight. So it kind of looks wispy like smoke. And then his uh, cigarette smoker's meow. And that's all it took. He became smoky. Now, the namesake of this channel, uh, his name just fits with everything. But the reason that Chance got his name, uh, I was working as a temp at, um, I was between jobs and working as a temp at a construction agency, uh, doing their payroll and forecasting, uh, payroll, bookkeeping, uh, that kind of stuff is what I uh, did for over 20 years before I had to quit working. Um, in fact, the last job that I had, I planned on retiring from. I worked there for almost six years before I found out I had cancer and ended up not coming back after my cancer treatments and filing for disability, but uh, it was in uh, tax prep and bookkeeping. It was a basically a bookkeeping office that also did taxes. Uh, so I did payroll and bookkeeping for a lot of different companies through them. But uh, anyway, I was working for this construction agency kind of between jobs. I'd just been laid off from a job. Um, this was right around the time that the construction and real estate market like fell apart. And this guy was still doing good, but it finally hit him, and he had to let me go, too. But uh, I was working for him, and I was on my way to work, and I just happened to be early this one morning. Uh, normally, I was behind our local transit, which is actually called, ironically enough, the Cat Bus. Um, I live near Clemson University in South Carolina, and... It's the Clemson Area Transit, shortened to the CAT bus. And uh, normally I was behind it, but this one day I happened to be early. And I was going down the road that was that runs just in front of our office. And I happened to see this little tiny white ball of fluff in the middle of the road. And... I figured it was an animal that had been hit, a possum, baby possum or something, but I went around it to avoid it just in case it hadn't been hit. And I looked up in my rearview mirror and this little head popped up. And I saw those little kitty cat ears, huge kitty cat ears on that little tiny body. And I stopped in the middle of the road and I pulled off right in front of a funeral home and went back, picked him up out of the uh, road. He was a little Siamese looking tiny kitten, just a few weeks old. I wasn't real sure. He didn't look like he'd been very long in this world. I was at back at my car with him and calling kitty kitty kitty, hoping that his mama would come out of somewhere because we're right near the railroad tracks and there's some old stray cats and stuff that live around there and around that funeral home and stuff. And I was thinking, you know, maybe mom will come out. Maybe I can find out where she is, go put him close to her, get him out of the road. Well, I called and called and called, and no cats were answering. No cats were coming out. Uh, but I stayed there and called for as long as I possibly could. And when I saw the cat bus coming, I knew it's time for me to get to work because I was usually right behind the cat bus. Uh, but anyway... Seeing that I was ahead of the cat bus was a chance encounter that day. Hint, hint. So it's by chance that I was early 
and it's by chance that I saw him in the middle of the road. By chance the cat bus didn't get him first. Um, but anyway, I rescued him, put him in my car, went to work, um, got out a, actually we had a guy who rented an apartment that was attached to the office next door. And I went and got him and asked him if I could put the cat in his office while I was at work. And I said, during lunch, I'm going to run and get him some, uh, something to put him in and whatever, which he had a cat food box. Uh, and we put him down in a little cat food box and he gave me a little wash towel and I put the wash towel in there with him. And, uh, couldn't feed him anything because he was, I mean, he was a baby, but I told him I was going to run and try and get him some cat milk uh, during my break and see if I could feed him a little bit of cat milk through an eyedropper or something uh, during my lunch break. And then as I only work part-time, so I would be leaving work at like 2, 3 o'clock. It depended on how quickly I got my work done. I told him I would come and get him after work and uh, go on to the vet with him. Let's see, I'm looking for what I'm going to do next. I think we will do the Y or N. There's a lot of those. I think Y will be it. Um, but anyway, I put him over there in his apartment. I went and checked on him several times, made sure he's okay. Uh, he curled up in the little towel and went to sleep, and uh, I went during lunch and got him some uh, milk and warmed it up in the microwave a little bit in a bowl and took an eyedropper and fed him just a little bit, not much, but I fed him a little bit. Did I show this to y'all? My cute little bucket. This is my cute little trash bucket. It actually has a magnet on the bottom of it because this is magnetic, and normally I have it magnetized down to one of my little covers, but I don't right now. This is my little trash bucket. Isn't it adorable? Anyway, back to my story. When I got off work, I grabbed him up and I headed off to the vets. And ended up finding out he was about three weeks old. And the vet didn't give him a good chance of living. Uh, he actually told me, you know, I'll teach you how to make formula for him is what he recommended. And he gave me a... Uh, recipe to make formula and even gave me a little uh, tiny uh, cat bottle which I still have I can't reach it right now it's in a drawer I might show it to you sometime but he gave me a little cat bottle and uh, told me what to do to feed him gave me some syringes too in case he wouldn't take it from the bottle at first and uh, wished me luck and sent me on my way I uh, said he didn't expect him to make it. It was very rare that they made it, but he made it. And I bottle fed him. I came home every day. I bottle fed him before I left for, for work. I came home every day at lunch and bottle fed him. I came home right afterwards and bottle fed him. I got up every couple hours at night. I wiped his little bottom with cotton balls and helped him go pee pee. I was his mama through and through. And we became extremely attached because of it. And I originally planned on like bottle feeding him and then uh, finding him a home. But uh, after bottle feeding him, that was kind of all she wrote. He became a little baby. But anyway, using his name, uh, I used to do uh, sell pearls on Facebook for Vantel Pearls. And my name on it was uh, a pearl by chance. And then... Uh, when I decided to uh, do a YouTube channel, I originally was going to do Nailed by Chance, which is kind of fitting because uh, you know, Nailed, Cat, Chance, it all fits. Uh, but then when I decided to do diamond painting instead, I had to come up with something else. And that's why in one of my first videos, I thanked uh, Pippa and Donnie for helping me come up with a different name. Um, I just couldn't think of what uh, to name it, and I knew I wanted to use the word chance in it, just like I did everything else, and uh, Pippa came up with part of it, and then Donnie kind of put it together, because I was going to do like diamonds by chance or something like that, and Pippa said, why don't you sparkle, 
And then Donnie said, a chance to sparkle. And that's all she wrote. That's the name. It stuck. I liked it and it stuck. And so here we are. Diamond painting. With a chance to sparkle. And uh, if I remember, uh, I will have already done it if I did remember. But if I remembered when I started this story, I will have put up pictures of both Chance and Smokey. So that you can see what they both look like. Chance uh, looks kind of like a Siamese, but not like a Siamese. He's got the coloring of a Siamese, but doesn't really have the facial features of a Siamese. So he's a seal point something. Don't know what. Uh, being born at railroad tracks, there's no telling what he was because there was all kinds of... Uh, well, it's kind of obvious that he's got some tabby in him because he's got the elm on his forehead. But uh, he's got the color markings like a uh, seal point Siamese cat. But he's my little baby and my little pest. He's my snuggle buddy. Uh, I'll probably post a picture on uh, Instagram of uh, him snuggled up to me. Uh, that's one of our morning rituals. Um, I get my computer in my lap, prop my feet up in my recliner, and uh, start watching YouTube videos in the morning while I'm having my morning tea and or whatever and just enjoying my morning and Chance will get right beside me beside my computer and like right between my the arm of my chair and my leg and curl up well play out flat uh, up the side of my leg and He'll purr himself to sleep right there and snuggles. I call him a little snuggle bunny in the morning. Because that's our little morning ritual every morning that I'm here. And speaking of morning tea, I'm not a coffee drinker. I drink uh, chai tea mostly. That's my favorite thing. I haven't found the perfect homebrew chai tea. Um, I like lattes. Or frappuccinos. Um, I haven't found the perfect thing to use for a home version of a chai. But I am always on the lookout for it. If anybody has any recommendations, please let me know. Uh, but I am a chai drinker, a tea drinker. I'm not a coffee drinker. Um, if I'm not having a chai, then I might have a cocoa or a uh, sometimes I'll have an apple juice or Kool-Aid or something like that in the morning, but the rest of the day it's usually water. Sometimes I'll have Mountain Dew. Uh, otherwise, well, water is one of my main drinks. Speaking of which, when you hear this noise, that is my metal straw in my metal bottle, and that's me getting a drink. Uh, and I am getting extremely stopped up. So y'all hear me sniffling? I am so sorry. I don't know why I'm getting so stopped up other than the fact that it's getting a little cool in the house. It is raining something fierce outside right now. That could have something to do with it because my body gets affected by weather through everything. Um... Why is there a black grill in the middle of my tray? I think there was a tag along. He fell in there? Yep, he fell down in there. Okay, doing the K's next. There are a lot of caves down here at the bottom, but let's get the top ones first. Oh, what else can we talk about right now? Um, trying to think. What other things do I have planned? I don't know what else I have planned for the channel. Um, I am going to be sh like showing some of my favorite uh, things in a video, my favorite tools or favorite uh, things that I use. Um, from uh, my toolbox or tool carrying case uh, that I travel with. Um, 
and I'll give links to anything. Um, my favorite pen, which this is one of them, probably my most favorite right now. Um, favorite cover minders. Favorite, I don't know, just things that I like to use in my diamond painting journey. And then, of course, the handmade portfolio. Um, there's going to be more whipping chats, of course. Um, what else? I may only, uh, if anybody is interested, uh, do a video on uh, doing poly gel on your nails. Speaking of which, my nails need to be done. I hope you aren't looking too closely at them because they are looking a little rough right now. Hopefully you can't see what I can see under this magnifying glass. You can see every single imperfection and mess up and error you make, which doing my nails at home means that they aren't going to be as professionally done as they would be done in a nail salon. But they're done well enough for me, and I get compliments on them all the time, especially my color choices. And I just realized I missed the tea earlier. Don't you hate it when you start going through some of your colors and you realize that you missed like one single little box of a previous color. Doesn't that just make you want to scream sometimes? Like, how did I miss that one? Especially when it looks like it's right beside another one. Anyway, I'll be probably do some of my favorite tips and tricks and tools and uh, whatnot in a video. Um, I'll probably do a video introducing my cat. Um, in the one that I was planning and probably still will do the whip and whammy, as I'm calling it, and whammy stands for who am I, I got a package from Miss Pippa. And in that video, I will be doing the Vegemite Challenge. So that video reason I haven't done that video yet is because I've got to get set up uh, for my second camera angle, kind of like Pippa does. Uh, but I'll be doing a second camera angle so that you can actually see me uh, head on as well as the painting that I'm doing at the time. And you'll get to see my reaction full force uh, when I try Vegemite for the first time. But that's going to be a video coming up, so I am going to be doing the Vegemite Challenge. Um, there are more whipping chats planned. Uh, I may go live sometime. I don't know. Um, I'm hoping to maybe do some collabs with some people eventually. Um, I hope I, I should have some more unboxings coming up soon. Um, I'm expecting a lot of stuff to come in the mail. Um, I do have uh, some containers coming in the mail. Because I had the idea, I was telling Robin with Patty Wax about this, because I have pretty much turned into a Patty Wax collector. And I already have about, oh, what? Let's see. I have, off the top of my head, I know I have cinnamon, apple, lemon pound cake, buttercorn pie, patchouli. Great knee high. I'm trying to think. I know there's another 
set or two. Those are six I'm thinking of off the top of my head that I have. Uh, but since I'm becoming a sort of patty wax collector, um, finding a place for it to all be stored without like all the scents mingling together and certain scents overtaking the others. Oh, Mermaid Lagoon, that's another one I have. Um, you kind of uh, need some kind of storage situation. So I have a couple of storage options coming that I am going to test out uh, for being able to store. Let's see, I've got it in my notebook. Let me pull out my notebook right here without dumping my computer. Let's see, I ordered containers that can hold five bricks of patty wax, the bricks, the normal brick size, five bricks, uh, six bricks with three additional spaces uh, for you to put like, I don't know, cover minders or something like that in, um, or even, they might even fit the little uh, lip gloss size uh, super stickies. And then there's a tin one, uh, which I think is double-sided. Each side holds five. Uh, there's one that could hold possibly up to nine. And then there's one that can hold up to 12 plus six additional or six to three additional um, sections for stuff like cover minders and things. So those are like some storage situations I was looking into. And I was thinking, you know, for people like me who collect a lot of scents, it'd be nice to be able to have all of your patty wax scents in one place. And so as soon as those start coming in, I'll probably show them to you in videos and let you see how well they work. Um, and then either, depending on what everybody thinks, either I can keep them, like get them in myself and maybe get uh, emblems from Robin or perhaps Robin will want to do it herself I don't know uh, but maybe I can become a patty wax storage supplier <laughs> or I can just tell you where to get your own uh, depending on which one that you want but I thought I might show that see what people thought see if people like the idea and maybe I would get a bunch of them, order a bunch of them, and you know, people could get them from me or whatever. Whoop, let go. I don't know. We'll see, but I'm doing the testing phases of it. I know Robin told me to let her know how it turns out, which I'll send her pictures and everything, showing her exactly how it turns out. But I thought that'd be a neat idea to. See if we could come up with some storage solutions for people like myself who seem to have a patty wax problem and can't stop buying it. Because <laughs> I definitely have a patty wax problem. I, love, I wish I could smell the cinnamon right now because it's probably smelling really nice sitting on my uh, pad like it is getting all nice and warm. It's probably smelling really nice in my room right now, but I cannot smell a single thing because my nose is completely stopped up. I mean, it is totally gone. I am a mouth feeder right now, unfortunately, which is making my mouth even more dry, which I have been diamond painting for over an hour and talking, so I'm probably going to close it up in a minute because... I don't think anybody wants to spend more than about an hour with me. I've already given you a lot of TMI information, but there's a lot more information I want to tell you about in my uh, official Whip and Whammy, where I give you more information about me and my life and the things that have happened in it. I've already given you some of the information. I'll probably repeat myself in the official video, but... Anyway, let's finish up these K's right quick. We're almost there. And then I will call it a night as far as this whipping chat's concerned. I'll probably keep on going until I finish this section myself. Um, 
but uh, since we are closing it out, if you are not a subscriber yet, I do ask that you please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Um, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Every thumbs up helps me get out there more and more, which will help my channel grow. Um, and I do want to grow. I want to be able to, um, I hate to admit it, but I want to be able to get to a thousand viewers as soon as possible so I can get monetized. Because once I get monetized, I can turn around and take that money and put it back into my YouTube channel and buy more diamond paintings and be able to afford more diamond art gloves and uh, stuff like that. And because uh, I don't like buying on AliExpress because it's really hard to buy on AliExpress and avoid uh, copyright infringement um, and not, and you have to sit there. I actually tediously go through the pictures and uh, make sure that I'm not buying a diamond painting that uh, belongs to an artist that uh, they are not being paid for. Um, I don't believe in that and I try my best to avoid it. I do have a couple that I will never show on this channel because uh, before I knew how to look, I did buy some, not realizing that they belonged to artists, and uh, I'm sad to say that, but of course I will never put them on this channel because of that, because um, the artist is not being compensated for it, and I don't think that I should advertise for uh, those diamond paintings to be bought when the artist isn't uh, reaping the rewards of their work being put into a diamond painting. Uh, but anyway, uh, the sooner I can get to a thousand subscribers, the sooner I will have a giveaway because I do plan on having a giveaway. And so far, right now, I have one item in the giveaway, which is going to be a Patty Wax uh, Super Sticky. Um, I did have it over here on my table, I thought, but apparently I moved it. Uh, but I do have another little tin of this, and I will be giving it away. It's already been bought, and it will be in the giveaway. Um, I'll probably get a scent of Patty Wax and give away it as well. And there may be a diamond painting. I don't know. Uh, it depends on how quickly I grow and get to that point. Uh, but that's going to be my first giveaway is when I reach 1,000 subscribers. And uh, so, yeah, give me a thumbs up. Help me get noticed. Um, tell your friends about me. Oh, gosh, sorry. Did not mean to shake the table. Uh, tell your friends about me. Subscribe. Get other people to subscribe. Uh, help me grow. And um, I'll see you guys on the next video. Love you all. Bye.